Hello, my name is Gabriel Brown, Principal Analyst with Heavy Reading, and I'm here with Karim El Malki, CEO of Athenet. Uh, Athenet's a very interesting company uh, that I've covered for some time. It's really pioneered some exciting new use cases in enterprise and industrial LTE, as well as public safety. Uh, great to have you here, uh, Karim. Um, tell us, you know, when we talk about industrial LTE, enterprise LTE, what do we mean by that, and why is that one of the hottest sectors in wireless today? Well, industrial enterprise LTE is the convergence between a demand and a technology shift. The demand is that of new verticals such as Industry 4.0, smart cities, autonomous vehicles that have specific needs on wireless communications that cannot be handled by current conventional networks. We're talking about a $30 billion per annum problem. And then we have a technology shift, and that is happening in the telecoms industry. So softwareization, cloud, um, that is changing the way operators are building networks. At the same time, there are some regulatory changes, like on the spectrum front, CBRS uh, in the US, for example. And these are lowering the barriers in terms of cost and complexity to deploy technologies such as LTE and future 5G for these verticals. So there's an incredible opportunity for service providers and end users to deploy and address these new markets. And in my view, it's a real stepping stone to 5G. Yeah, it's fantastic that the technology is now kind of uh, scaled in a way that all these different users can apply it to their own business process, essentially. Which, which sectors do you think are, are kind of hottest? Which are adopting this first? Is it sort of primary industries, agriculture and mining, or is it industrial, uh, manufacturing, logistics, you know, what, what do you see there? So we've seen and implemented a number of these verticals. Um, some of the more interesting ones are the energy. We've mm -hmm. seen quite a lot of demand there. Um, we're talking about mines. Uh, we're talking about utilities in terms of production uh, facilities, in terms of smart grids. These are industries where communications, wireless communications, is a lifeline in terms of regulatory aspects, but also in terms of safety at work and the control of the entire network. They're fundamental. Um, we are also talking about Industry 4.0, manufacturing plants, state car manufacturing plants, where communications, wireless communications, is really at the basis of these new technologies on Industry 4.0, which are really the connectivity, very reliable and low latency connectivity between sensors, between robots, for example, and, mm -hmm. and between people on the shop floor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you've got other sectors that are coming up, like uh, transport, um, airports, ports, logistics areas, smart cities. Smart cities are very interesting because you've got a convergence between the requirements from different types of players and customers in a smart city, like uh, transport, uh, public safety, utilities, mm -hmm. um, government. In all these situations, they have different types of requirements for each service that are difficult to handle unless you use these kind of dedicated services. You've also got healthcare, for example, hospitals. And there, I, I like that case because it brings up an important aspect, which is that of security, where um, there, are, there is specific information that is sensitive and should not leave the premises, and therefore where edge, LTE edge networks can make a difference. Mm -hmm. That's good. One of the sort of things we've been talking about at Heavy Reading lately is we have this idea of mission critical services for safety of life and production critical for enterprise users that really can't afford for the network to go down if, if it's a car factory or something like that uh, is, is tied to it. Um, what kind of requirements, performance requirements, reliability requirements do these users place on the mobile mm -hmm. core technology? So we really have to change the way we think about the mobile core to be able to address these sectors. It's no longer a monolithic mobile core that generically handles all consumers. This has to totally change from a centralized core of uh, inflexible vision to a federation of nodes or a federation of networks even. Mm -hmm. And to be able to manage that, you have to build the product in a totally different way, which is what we've been doing for quite a long time. Um, you also have to change your mobile core in order to deliver what these customers need and therefore it's not a cookie cutter approach as it was before. That's another big change in terms of first vision, visibility and control. The customer wants to continue managing their network as they are today. Um, they clearly want performance. Um, the low latency communications are fundamental. They want it to be reliable. 
it should never go down because it is business critical or sometimes mm -hmm. safety critical. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, it needs to be secure because some of that data should never leave. It is the whole point why they typically build their own networks because they don't want it to go outside those premises. Yeah, yeah. I mean, reliable, automated, secure, visible. These are all the kind of key, key phrases we hear when we talk about enterprise uh, LTE dedicated uh, uh, core networks and so forth. What makes Athernet different then? You know, a lot of incumbent vendors of um, core, core technology. What puts you in this market? What puts you in such a good position? So Athernet won the Global Mobile Awards in 2016 because we're quite unique and different from the incumbents, um, both in terms of the technology approach and also in terms of our experience on the verticals. We talked about a technology shift, the softwareization of the network. We've been working for 12 years on this, mm -hmm. um, implementing you know, our, our software starting from 3G, now 4G and coming up on 5G very soon. Um, we've been building it from scratch in-house in a way to be able to deploy a network in a distributed manner to be able to cater for these kinds of users. And that has been a major paradigm shift, which we somehow anticipated. We deployed our first um, virtualized 3G network already, uh, 3G core already in 2010. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And our experience on the verticals is also fundamental, not only with this technology shift where we are already bringing in sort of pre-5G features, um, but the market, because really it is giving the customers what they want. Um, we've been doing a lot of early deployments really pioneering the market in terms of, um, for example, having done the first um, uh, LTE Smart Grid already in 2011, mm -hmm. uh, the first real deployment of LTE in an emergency. We've deployed uh, LTE on ships. We've been doing uh, the first LTE networks in, some, in, in an African country, for example. Mm -hmm. um, this is positioning us in a great situation where exactly at the point where there's the convergence between these trends and there's a real market need, we mentioned Industry 4.0, smart cities and so on, that cannot be satisfied without this technology. And we've been doing it for over 12 years, so we believe we're really well positioned to address it. Okay, good. And I guess understanding the kind of requirements of those different verticals or, or user types pretty key as well. So when we talk about verticals then, um, we're kind of firmly of the view at heavy reading that uh, operators or, or different actors, enterprise or whatever, that sort of make the right moves now in 4G to uh, develop use cases, develop lines of business, are going to be in a much better position when it comes to deploying 5G to actually you know, achieve commercial success much faster. If you have the business established, it's logical that you're going to do better in, you know, when you actually roll out 5G technology and, and put that on that network. How do you kind of make that shift between, you talked about 3G, you're in 4G now, obviously. How, how are you thinking about the shift onto a 5G in this market? Well, 5G has impacts on the mobile core, which are important. Um, one of them is the user plane control plane separation, which mm -hmm. means that you can deploy different parts of the network as and when you need them. Another one is network slicing, which means you can give the right quality of service level um, to the customers, um, especially these vertical customers that are quite special, and low latency communications. Now, all of these are things that, for example, we've already implemented and deployed in many cases today in our, in our 4G LTE product. Now, we are seeing operators that are facing challenges in maintaining their ARPU levels. Mm -hmm. They're lowering costs in order to maintain profitability, but these markets can be really important for them um, to really grow the revenues in segments that they've not really been using uh, and, and exploiting uh, so far. And I believe if operators really do this right on 4G, it'll be the perfect stepping stone to 5G. Terrific. Um, great to hear about your business and your customers. Thanks, Karim. Thank you.